It's a privilege to welcome you to the Palais des Nations for the Seventh Earth Dialogue. The United Nations Office at Geneva is pleased to host this important event in support of a sustainable future for all. It's very appropriate that this edi edition of the Earth Dialogues takes place here in International Geneva, which is home to so many of the key stakeholders in the global response to our sustainability challenges. Geneva owes its leading role in sustainability to the continued support of our host country at all levels. I am therefore particularly pleased to share this podium with distinguished representatives of our host country and thank them for the valuable contributions to the United Nations and our partners. It is also a pleasure to congratulate Green Cross on the 20th anniversary. Over the past 20 years, Green Cross has shown the importance of strong and consistent civil society voices, voices that highlight our common environmental challenges. Also, when some may find this uncomfortable to hear voices that call us to action. With President Gorbachev in the lead, Green Cross has been an early and eloquent advocate for sustainability before the term entered mainstream political discussion. The United Nations values the close cooperation that has been established with Green Cross and will look forward to building on this in the years to come. The need for action is even more urgent today than it was when Green Cross was founded. And the initiative to convene the Earth Dialogues could not be more timely. Environmental sustainability is threatened by unsustainable consumption and production patterns. Greenhouse gas emissions continue to grow while we are losing forests, species, and fish stocks at a rapid rate. This is why the Secretary General, Mr. Ban Ki-moon, has made sustainable development a key priority for his second term. The Earth Dialogues represent a critical opportunity to generate support for a strong post-2015 development framework. And it is my hope that today's discussions can feed into these global debates. This year, we mark the International Year of Water Cooperation. And as we meet, the world celebrates World Water Week. There can be no doubt that water is a subject that touches us all. 148 countries include territory within one or more river basins that is shared with other countries. The potential for instability and insecurity if we do not share water resources adequately and fairly is clear. Continued population growth and urbanization coupled with the effects of climate change is placing our water resources under strain. Globally, 783 million people lack access to clean or relatively safe water. Two and a half billion people do not have access to toilets. It is estimated that 60% of the world's population will be living in cities in the next eight years. And as the rate of urbanization continues to grow, the need 
for action on water increases. Green Cross has been leading the way in drawing attention to these challenges, and I am pleased that water features prominently on today's agenda. In conclusion, let me share with you three points which I believe need to be taken into account for a sustainable future as they cut across the different agenda items before us. First, we need to chart a way forward that places both poverty, eradication, and sustainable development as at its core. These are not contradictory, but complementary and mutually reinforcing objectives. Second, we need to address sustainability in a comprehensive manner. Environmental imperatives cannot be addressed in isolation. We need action that integrates the economic, social, environmental, and security dimensions of sustainability anchored in the concepts of dignity and equity. Peace and security are the foundation of a sustainable future and must be included in our parameters for sustainability. This is not an easy task, but we must not shy away from this discussion simply because it's complex. Third, we need to forge more meaningful partnerships for sustainability. Across the globe, we have the knowledge and ideas that are needed for successful and sustainable development. Whether it is in information, communication, transportation, or medicine, we have the technologies to leapfrog to new, le new levels of sustainability. But we need to get better at pulling together these capacities. We need cooperation among all stakeholders, governments, civil society, science, business, and foundations to move the sustainability agenda ahead. I therefore especially appreciate that representatives of all these communities are present here today. We must build on this commitment to working together better. As this title of our meeting today highlights, we need a dialogue about our common future. A transparent and inclusive global conversation where all stakeholders can speak and where there is an opportunity to hear the different points of view. But the exchange is not an end in itself. It has to be the first step on the road to action. Let us take that first step together today with an action-based roadmap that tackles the issues of sustainability, security, and development for the future for all. I thank you for your attention. Mr. Director General of the United Nations, Madame la Conseillère d'État, Mr. President of the Green Cross International, ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues. It is a great pleasure to welcome all of you to this conference on the occasion of the 20th anniversary of Green Cross International. In our rapidly changing world, 20 years is a long period. In 1993, the year when Green Cross International came into being, our world was going through a series of fundamental transformations. History seemed to have reached a turning point. It was a time of great hopes. Three years after the implosion of the Soviet Union, many newly independent countries were rapidly transforming into mostly stable and successful democracies that would fundamentally change the face of Europe. 
1993 was also the year when Nelson Mandela won the Nobel Peace Prize and South Africa constitutionally abandoned racial discrimination. And it was the year after the groundbreaking Earth Summit in Rio that paved the way for a better understanding, awareness and management of the world's limited resources. Yet, at the same time in 1993, the world was a place of various crises. In Europe, the bloody breakup of Yugoslavia was taking its course and wars in Somalia, Afghanistan and in the Caucasus among others caused the death of thousands and the displacement of millions. Parts of Africa were struck by serious famine and the accelerated rise of the sea level was a worrisome warning sign for the devastating effects of climate change. Ladies and gentlemen, the world has changed since 1993 in various regards, certainly for the better. However, the challenges we are facing have not decreased in complexity, scale or in number. Unemployment rates are high, environmental threats have risen in number, unsustainable consumption and production patterns as well as demographic growth have increased pressure on natural resources and persistent inequalities continue to erode social cohesion. We are here today to discuss some of these crucial issues that will be decisive for the future of our planet. Switzerland intends to play a vital role not only in discussing these challenges but also in tackling them. Our country enjoys a proven record of international solidarity which stems from the country's decade-long humanitarian tradition as well as from its continuous efforts to contribute to a more equal, more sustainable world. As a small country, we are aware of how dependent our well-being is on the prosperity of others, both near and far. And we are equally aware of the need to tackle today's global challenges in close collaboration with international partners. Therefore, Switzerland advocates the strengthening of a global partnership for development in the new framework that will replace the Millennium Development Goals in 2015 and take forward the Sustainable Development Agenda. Multilateral cooperation between states will remain important. At the same time, Switzerland aims at strengthening its ties to actors from civil society, such as Green Cross International, with the private sector and with the scientific community. We have to look at sustainability as a complex concept with at least three dimensions, the social, the economic and the environmental. Hence, our overarching goal is to achieve sustainable development and eradicate extreme poverty while at the same time respecting planetary boundaries fostering peace and security and adhering to human rights obligations and commitments. With respect to the environmental aspect of sustainable development, which is the core competence of Green Cross International, Switzerland will put specific emphasis on challenges related to water security. And I was very happy to hear the words, the eloquent words of the Director General of the United Nations with that regard. This endeavor is not only about drinking water and sanitation, but also about water resources, wastewater management and water quality. Furthermore, Switzerland will pay particular attention to challenges in the field of sustainable consumption and production of goods and issues linked to disaster risk reduction, sustainable energy, biodiversity and sustainable cities, among others. 
I am convinced that many of you who are present here today share our goals and our vision. For this reason, we set strong hopes in the continuation and strengthening of the collaboration with Green Cross beyond 2015. Taking together is the first important, talking together is the first important step yet it has to be followed by collaborative action. It is only by joining forces and acting together that we will achieve the challenges we want to see, the changes we want to see in the world. Ladies and gentlemen, some of the challenges that characterized the state of the world 20 years ago have been successfully tackled. Even so, many challenges remain and new ones emerge, the positive changes that we have witnessed over the past two decades show that progress is possible, that history can be actively shaped by collaborating, by acting, by being persistent. This is a strong message and it implies that the course of the world in the coming 20 years will depend on each and every one of us. Let us therefore look at today's gathering as an opportunity to strengthen our ties and to get better equipped for the challenges ahead. With these thoughts in mind and in this spirit, I would once again like to congratulate Green Cross International on its 20th anniversary and wish you a fruitful exchange here in Geneva. Thank you very much for your attention. Monsieur le Directeur Général, Excellence, Mesdames et Messieurs, c'est avec plaisir que je vous apporte le salut du Gouvernement de la République et du Canton de Genève à l'occasion du 7 Dialogue de la Terre, organisé sous l'égide de Green Cross International. Mardi 20 août 2013, l'humanité avait déjà Humanity had already consumed all of its resources for Plus the year. Encore, Even more worrying, le jour du dépassement the day that we uh, exceed our annual quota comes earlier every year. This environmental debt, which we are accumulating year on year, is unsustainable. En effet, la course In fact, aux ressources, the crazy rush for resources is causing conflicts widening inequalities and increasing global imbalances. La simple prise de conscience de l'ampleur the simple awareness of the magnitude and seriousness of the situation is no longer enough. Many actions need to be taken with determination and with courage. Regardless of the level, the local level, the national level, the national level, it is up to the authorities to combat and prevent aussi uh, une uh, these developments. But it's also an individual, private responsibility of every individual. Each and every one of us can act by adopting responsible conduct in solidarity. And that is the whole point of the Seventh Earth Dialogues. <laughs> Une belle Today de provides us with a wonderful opportunity to network all of the stakeholders to pull our ideas and our skills to build a sustainable, pacifique. peaceful planet. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, je le vœu par le I share Gorbachev the wish expressed by President Gorbachev that we need to revolutionize the way in which people see their own lives, the lives of their children, and change the way fundamentally that we see the planet we live on. Therefore, I'd express the hope that the Geneva climate, Geneva, the capital of peace and human rights, a center for the environment, will help to bring about the changes we all await. Débat. I wish Merci. you successful discussions. Thank you very much.
Mr. Director General, Excellences, ladies and gentlemen, it's a privilege to be at the opening session of this conference. First of all, I would like to express our heartfelt thanks to the United Nations offices of Geneva for the possibility to hold our conference at this magnificent room. It's a historical place and of course it uh, sets the level of the discussions that will follow very highly due to its historical uh, nature. Uh, we are celebrating today the 20th anniversary of the Green Cross with this seventh edition of the Earth Dialogues which were launched 10 years ago and the first session took place in Lyon. It has become ever since a uh, value loaded platform for development of the proposals and the solutions on sustainable development. I think that the choice of Geneva for the anniversary um, uh, event uh, uh, of the Earth Dialogues is very symbolical because Geneva is the cradle of the modern multilateralism. The first event that took place was in the current building of Hotel de Ville in Alabama Room, where the first mediation services in the Civil War of the United States were provided by Switzerland. Then it came into being the Red Cross in Switzerland. Then we saw the nascence of the League of Nations and after the war we have ever since the headquarters of the European offices of the United Nations. So we thought that today the voice and appeal in support of the multilateral system that exists but exists in a terrible difficulties today will be much stronger if it comes from Geneva, the cradle of multilateralism. And I want to assure you that uh, we will use this opportunity to raise our voice in support of the unique political mechanisms which are represented today by the United Nations in order to promote sustainability, peace, security, and fight against poverty. I must say that the world has never been changing that quickly as today. Just imagine, even tonight, there will be 220,000 people at the dinner table that were not here to, even yesterday. And many of them will be frustrated. Very of them will be very unhappy half of them will lack food, one third of them will not have water and sanitation and of course this factor becomes the major driver of the world development. Therefore I would like to thank very much the very thoughtful comments of my co-panelists and I would like especially to thank the Director General for his three points on the agenda and I would say spe specifically because they resonate 100% with the philosophy, with the record and with the mission of the Green Cross. I hope that as a result of this one day session which is filled by the best intellect and I'm not exaggerating we have here the representatives of the major intellectual groups major individuals and we will be able to tap from their wisdom from their knowledge and I'm sure that at the end of the day we will be able to produce a declaration which will 
uh, represent a road map how we can walk the talk. Thank you very much.